Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Justin here from Sticky Mitts Cannabis. We're going to talk about the upcoming outdoor grow season and how to prepare for it for this season. Um, when, we get a lot of questions. People ask us, when should we put them out? Um, is it too early? What should I feed them? How often should I water them? Um, you know, a lot of different questions. And we'll try to answer all of them as much as we can. But today we're going to go over a lot of what not to do. And what you should do and a little bit of both i guess you'd say um just kind of a general mistakes and tip list before the upcoming season gets upon us um definitely you want to hit the subscribe hit the bell you know wherever it's at here i'm still learning so work with me here um we all make mistakes in the grow seasons every year we learn something new we all make mistakes we all make errors we all fuck up you know it is continuously a learning experience for all of us um, but the number one thing I recommend for anybody before they start their grow season is definitely research your genetics make sure you have good genetics if you're gonna start from seed make sure you have a reputable seed bank you know somebody that has a lot of proven results with their phenos such as um, their autos make sure they work make sure they grow correctly for your atmosphere and where you're growing and like I said I'm in Michigan myself the weather changes daily one day it could be 60 degrees the next it could be 30 I mean the weather's really changed this year and that is definitely something you have to put into consideration you know um, make sure you find a strain that maybe in your area you have a high moisture and you need something that is um, mold resistant. Maybe you need something that is more resistant to bugs. Um, definitely make sure you research what you're looking for and the type of area you're gonna grow it into to make sure it's gonna be right for the environment you plan to put it into. I cannot stress that enough. Um, people don't research their genetics and they put a plant outside and then they're asking, hey, why isn't it doing so well? Why is it stunted? Why isn't it growing big? Well, bro, you just put an indoor strain outdoor and it doesn't know what to do. It's not made for that type of thing. Certain genetics were bred for certain types of grows. Um, definitely maintain your research and invest some time into your grow. Um, at the end of the day, you're the key to the grow. If you don't put your time in, you're not going to get much results out. Um, it's kind of like that. Um, where are we here? 419 420 here april and michigan it's uh about 58 degrees here roughly and the sun's shining but it, just a half hour ago it was cloudy and it looked like it was going to rain i mean um yesterday and just this morning we had frost so to tell you how, how much different your environment can change is really really plays factor into how the weather just wants to play that day it's as crazy as it set, sounds um you know, a lot of people ask, why is our plant slow? Why are they squatting? Why are they stunted? Why is it a run of the group? You're definitely going to want to pop a lot of seeds. And I'm not talking a lot, a lot, but enough to where you can weed out the, the weak ones and stay with the strong ones, you know. You want something that definitely is going to produce well and look strong and healthy. But, you, like I said, you get in what you put out. Um, or the opposite, however you want to say it. But, um definitely you know if if you're not good with growing um a lot of people say recommend using an auto flower in michigan we do have a we have a very short grow season unfortunately and sometimes some of them auto flowers seven to nine weeks are very very ideal for our type of growing situation some people don't like them some people do i haven't had the personal experience of growing an auto flower myself yet so when i get some of them phenos in my hand Hopefully in the next few months, we'll, we'll start seeing what we can do with them. Um, I've got some good genetics myself growing. Um, and I definitely think the ones we chose for this outdoor grow this season are going to be great. Um, because they're definitely not recommended for indoor and they're already growing at a very great rate. Um, you know, the, the thing I can't stress the most with an up coming grow season is location you, you want a lot of sun you want to get as much as you can you want to have access to good water you want to be able to have great nutrients you know don't be afraid to check the pH level of your water check the pH le level of your soil um, I'm just thinking of things off the top of my head here you know um, 
Uh, I've heard of people already saying they're putting their plants outside. Really? I think it's a little early for that. At least wait until the first weekend, if not the second weekend of May, just to be safe, I would say, if you're in the Michigan region. Definitely check with your farmer's almanac, your frost ratings for your area, and make sure it's ideal. But that doesn't deter you from getting the grow season started. I mean, you can start with as simple as using a clamp light with a CFL bulb or a windowsill to even start getting some of your vegging going. You can veg indoor. I personally start my vegging right around the second weekend of February, if not a little sooner. It depends on how things are going personally for my indoor setup. But um, right now is probably not the ideal time to start growing from seed. But I, it's not unpractical, I guess you'd say. I've seen it done and had great results. It just all depends on how, what you put into it. But um, when a lot of people say, hey, I'm going to go from clones. Do I go from clones? I haven't yet. It's very hard to go from a clone because a lot of growers, they don't keep the environment sanitary or clean. There could be aphids. There could be spider mites. It could have disease. It could, I mean, it could be the wrong genetic even for your type of growing situation. So definitely, 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 definitely don't recommend doing that. Okay, back to things here. The one thing I can't stress enough about a grow is make sure you have it enclosed. Make sure you have it hidden. Um, loose lips sink ships. It's simple as that. You know, it could be one or two people that you tell, and then one or two people could just open their mouth to one or two other people, and boom, there goes your whole crop. I've seen it. I had a buddy that he just trusted the wrong person and came back, and all his plants were gone the next day right before harvest. I mean, how practical is that? Not practical at all, definitely, definitely not. So, shh, don't be telling people where your shit's at, for real. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, a, a smart bear doesn't shit in his own yard. So, you you can do the math, and you know, but make sure, make sure you're not just growing it in the wide open. Secure it, if you can, lock it. I mean, this is an investment for a lot of us. Some of us, maybe they have a lot easier than we do, but... For us, it's an investment. We invest a lot of time, money, and effort into our crops to get them to where we want them to be. So that's one thing I can't stress enough about. And then the second thing, you know, is definitely keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. You know, don't overthink your grow. Don't put too much into it because in the end, you might not get a lot out. But at the same time, I mean, it doesn't mean don't put, follow all the guidelines and tips you've gotten. But sometimes overthinking it. Actually, all, all you're doing is hurting your pocketbook. You're not benefiting and, and truly any more than if you were to do it on a cheaper scale. So make sure you research the type of grow you want to do. Um, don't, don't do it half-assed at the same time, though, neither. I mean, you, you put in what you get out. You reap what you sow. So basically, if you don't do good newts, you don't keep an eye on your plants, you don't basically treat them like a baby. Like, that's the only way I can put it. That's what I do with my plants. They are my children. I hate to put it that way. I make sure that they are coloring of the leaves. Um, I make sure they say stay defoliated. I do the low stress training. And then I just move that type of attention right back out to the plants when I move them outdoors for the season. I mean, I don't stop what I'm doing. I continue to give them the same amount of attention as I always would. I mean, and the great thing about doing it outdoors, you can do it organic, you can do it in no-till, and you can do it very on a, very affordable. I mean, it's not very hard, and it's very forgiving, and if you do it right, sometimes you possibly can have more than one harvest a year. Um, do your part and reap the, the reward, that's all I can say. Well, I don't have a whole lot other to stay today, but uh, um, stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Have a great day, everybody.